Hey everyone, welcome back to the Board Game Spotlight. Today we're looking at Guildmaster. This is the next game from Good Games Publishing. It's for two to four players, and it plays in about 90 to 120 minutes. So let's take it to the table, then I'm going to tell you about it. So in Guildmaster, you are playing as a master of a new adventurer's guild. The goal of the game is to compete with your rival guilds in order to gain the most fame over nine rounds. Now you're going to do that by gaining new adventures, by building upgrades into your guild, and by completing contracts for your guild. Now each guild is going to come with four unique adventurers, and each of these adventurers is going to come with a specific skill set for completing contracts. Additionally, some of the adventurers may have different abilities that will trigger and activate at various times throughout the game. So at the beginning of the game, we're going to start with a half moon phase in round one. So any cards that would have a half moon plot phase would activate at this time. Additionally, there are blood moon phases and then you have full moon plot phases. At the beginning of each round, we're going to go through our order process. So we're going to place these screens up. We are secretly going to look through our hand of order cards and we are going to build teams of adventurers. Now at the beginning of the game, each guild is going to have resources, but they're, they're pretty light. We're going to each start with a level one stable, a level one mess hall, and a level one bar. Now each guild is also going to have the ability to have a small upgrade. Now at the beginning of the game, this upgrade can be chosen by the player. So this is a reroll one die twice or reroll two dice. And this is turn a die to a six. And so that is chosen by the player with how they want to start the game with their guild. Additionally, each guild is going to start with a common contract. Now this is a private contract that we can complete if we wander, and we'll talk about wandering later in this video. We're going to assign our teams two orders. At the beginning of the game, we can only do two orders. So we've gone through and we will complete order A and contract two. So we would look at the board and here is order A and contract two is right there. So we are going for those two orders. Our opponent is going to then choose theirs as well. I don't know that our opponent is going for order A and contract two, but they are, and that is unknown to me. So you need to be able to pay for adventurers that you are trying to hire. So in this instance, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go to order A, but I need to pay five coins in order to hire this. Now, it's important that you overpay if you think that you're going to get beaten to this spot at the beginning of a round. Because remember, we are going to resolve these orders in order from left to right on the board and from one to two on our guilds. So when we are finished, with our orders, we are going to lift this screen and we are going to resolve our orders. And so we would see we are going for A and two and our opponent is going for A and contract two. So neither of us decided to build. However, we'll go ahead and talk about builders. If one of us had chosen to order a team to build, we would be able to pay the price in builders and depending on the number of players, again, this is going to start at different levels. Uh, but if we wanted to build three builders, it would cost us 10 coins. So if we hired three builders, we would be able to do a number of different things. We could buy a small upgrade for our guild. We could buy a large upgrade for our guild, or we could buy one of these prestige upgrades for our guild. So the small upgrades, again, you're able to hold four of them inside of your guild or you can upgrade your existing level on your guild. So we could buy a level two stable, a level two mess hall, or a level two bar, or we could buy one prestige upgrade. And these prestige upgrades, you're limited to owning one per game. And these are end game fame objectives that you are trying to complete in order to gain more fame at the end of the game. But we are going to attempt to hire or recruit the level adept a action space adventurer so we have both gone for it so here's what happens when two teams collide with trying to take the same action i have paid seven coin 
and my opponent has paid five. I would win this adventurer into my guild because I overpaid more than what my opponent did. Now my opponent then has the ability to wander. When you wander, you can do two things. You can either roll with your skill in order to gain fame and coins, or you can attempt to complete one of your private contracts in your hand. So it makes more sense with this team to try to complete this contract. Now the contracts have a coin value you'll gain for completing this contract. They also have a fame value you'll gain, and then they have bonus abilities, and sometimes they have other abilities that are going to impact other guilds. So we would take three dice, and we're going to roll these dice and we're going to add the number to see if we meet the requirement. Again, it has to meet or exceed. So we rolled a nine, which is exactly what we needed. So we would go up three points and we would gain two coins into our treasury. And we would choose another guild to gain two fame if we do we gain one fame, otherwise we choose a guild to lose a fame. So in a two-player game, it makes a lot more sense to force your opponent to lose fame. So we've completed that contract. We were unable to complete our A order. We get to keep our money, but that was unsuccessful. They were able to complete their A objective and they recruited Magda into their guild. Then we would go to the second order. So after all players have resolved their first order, we then go to our second order. Again, here, we are both going for the same contract. Now here's where Guildmaster gets really interesting. There is a ton of negotiation, backstabbing, bribes, back alley deals, all sorts of fun conniving aspects of the game when you tie for contracts. So now we're forced with a decision. Do we want to cooperate with our opponent in order to complete this contract? Or do we want conflict? And do we want to take the contract all to ourselves? So before this decision is made, all players who have tied for a contract can enter into a negotiation period. So they can, anything is game. You can bribe the other player with coins you have. Now each player, if they cooperate, they're going to gain the two fame if they succeed. However, everything else on the card is negotiable. You could negotiate the coins, you can negotiate the bonus, who gets to replace the successful contract, who gains whatever you want, who keeps the contract. Basically players, it's an open, negotiation period for players to decide what happens with the contract. So if we cooperate, we can do two things. We can add together the skill check of one skill. So we could add all of the sanctum or all of the armory together, or we could independently try our own. So they would roll four for armory and we would roll three for our sanctum skill. If you succeed independently, you're gonna gain whatever was negotiated. If you fail, you will gain nothing. Now, if players choose to conflict, this is where the game gets a little harder. So you're going to independently try to complete this contract. Now it gets harder though, because there's a conflict penalty. When you choose conflict, you have to roll the skill check plus the number of dice you are rolling. So in this instance, it's three plus 10 is 13. I need a minimum of 13 with three dice to pass. My opponent would need a minimum of six plus four for 10 in order to pass. Whoever scores more than their minimum gets to complete the contract. So we'll roll three here and we have six, nine, 10, 11. So we failed to complete that contract. Our opponent would roll four dice and they are looking for a 10 or more and they have more than 10. So our opponent would be able to successfully complete that contract, gaining all of the listed effects of that card and doing it for themselves. Whoever successfully completes a contract is then going to choose what contract gets placed out on the board, either from the legendary, heroic, or common stack. And again, it just depends on what skill check range you're trying to accomplish because it gets harder the higher up you go in the game. After all players have resolved their orders, 
you're going to go into the reset phase. Now it's important to note that not every player is going to have the same amount of orders because you can get new upgraded stables. Some players may have four orders, other players may still have two, some may have three, so it just depends. The number of orders being resolved may be different for each game, for each player, it just depends. Now with these upgrades, I wanna note that there's only one level three, so it's first come, first serve to the best upgrade for your guild. So that's really important with trying to figure out what you're going to go in and how you're going to strategize the way your guild is going to work. So during the reset phase, each player is going to gain their listed income from their bar. You're going to reset the builder cost level. You're then going to advance the moon phase and it flips to a full moon from a half moon and vice versa. You're then going to reveal any new adventurers in the adventurers area. And then any contracts that were placed are going to be revealed for all players. If it was during a blood moon, during blood moons, players would draw a common private contract. And again, those are contracts that you can complete if you are forced to wander or if you choose to wander. Again, you can choose to not complete an order, which would allow you to wander if you would like to. After players have gone through all those steps, you're going to play another round. Guildmaster is played in nine rounds. The player at the end of nine rounds, whoever has the most fame is declared the winner. So I wanna take a minute to talk about the engine building or the guild progression inside of Guildmaster because in order to gain these heroic and legendary adventurers, you must first meet the requirements for them. So in order to get a legendary adventurer, they are not even going to be interested in your guild. They're not even going to talk to you until you have either another legendary or a heroic adventurer. The same is true of a heroic adventurer. They're not going to talk to you until you have at least an adept or another heroic or another legendary. So what you're trying to do is progressively enhance your guild with better adventurers to get the heroic and then the finally to get the legendary adventures in your guild because those are going to allow you to unlock and complete the higher quest contracts which have a much better reward for them. So Guildmaster has this really interesting progression of your guild as you gain new adventurers and as you upgrade your guild, as you complete more contracts, gaining different skill mitigation is incredibly important if you're trying to go wide with your adventurers. So there are really two types of guild progression in the game. You can either go wide, which is to gain as many different symbols of the adventurers in order to complete a wide variety of contracts, or you can instead choose to gain like symbols. So you could do all of theater or all library or all sanctum. Try to have the most powerful guild of that specific skill in order to basically run over anybody that would get in your way with trying to accomplish that skill. So there are two different ways of play. Both ways work extremely well. In fact, you can even do kind of like a hybrid of both of those if you wanted to. The secret hidden orders and that reveal is just it, it, it gets your blood pumping. You have this adrenaline flowing through you because you know what you need. You're watching your opponents. You're watching how they've built their guild. You kind of think you might know where they're going, but maybe they're not. And so you're trying to play around that. You're trying to outmaneuver and outwit each opponent at the different levels. Again, overpaying for some, utilizing your different action phases and plot phase abilities, trying to build the best guild that you can. Now, if Guildmaster sounds like a game that's interesting to you, if you'd like to know more about the game, take a look at the description below for a link to their Kickstarter page. This has been Derek with the Board Game Spotlight, and this has been your preview of Guildmaster.